Tuesday night. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We just greet all of those that are watching by way of Legacy Academy. We bless you. We thank God for you. Hallelujah. And we're just grateful for all that God is doing. Amen. Amen. Wow, what a weekend we had in the Holy Ghost in Georgia. Praise God. Powerful time in the Spirit of the Lord. So many testimonies on the Saturday night. It was an awesome time. The revelation that was brought on Sunday morning was so powerful concerning framing up worlds. Somebody say framing up worlds. And I dove into... um, a revelation the Lord had given me that's actually going to be released in my next book. Uh, Chosen is the name of the book. It's the second volume of our prophetic series that we're doing. We're going to be releasing that. It's already at the publishers. We're really excited about it. I believe it'll be an eye opener, a game changer for all those that will read it. Of course, the first book is on ascension. This book is going to be specifically in dealing with prophetic ministry, the office of the prophet and the chosen uh, place that God has called prophets to walk into. Amen? Amen? And so on Sunday morning, we dove into that. And then Sunday night, we had a powerful time in the Holy Ghost. We had many miracles. And we taught on creative miracles. Somebody say creative miracles. And, of course, you never want to leave people, even if they don't believe in atmospheric, you'll, you'll just, just wade in the waters with them until they get healed. And there's been times where I've had to just gauge where the people were at and their faith were at. Sometimes we see atmospheric miracles. Other times it takes the laying on of hands to see the breakthrough. And praise God, we just stayed until we got the victory. Amen. And so there was a number of miracles, deaf ears opening, different, different uh, ailments leaving, devils coming out of people on Sunday night. It was awesome. And God just moved in such power. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. There's something about just staying and waiting. I had just felt like one of those old school meetings with R.W. Schambach or A.A. Allen. I, I told the pastor, I said, I need a chair. He thought I was getting a chair for the people I was praying for. I said, no, the chair is for Brother Charlie. I'm going to just sit here. You got a line foreman, and so we're just going to keep on praying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God just moved. And uh, people would come up and instantly were healed. A number of people healed from, like, deafness, taking their hearing aids out. We had... We had uh, Several of those, it was powerful. Others just had pain in their body, needed healing. God gave them a healing miracle. We got a cane that we're going to be putting, adding to our collection. A woman, woman got healed by the Spirit of God. She just was so happy. She just said, keep the cane. So I was just praising the Lord. I Just so many miracles. You know, Jesus is a miracle worker. And when you know who's in you, you just flow in what's in you. Amen? Amen. And it'll just keep on flowing. As long as you stay in the revelation of the thing, it will not stop. And it'll only increase. And your faith will just get bigger and bigger where you'll start believing for bigger and greater miracles. One man walked up. He said he needed a double knee replacement. Power of God touched him. He started running around the building. I mean, it was just awesome. Sat back down. I said, sir, how are you feeling? He said, I'm completely healed. And we're just grateful that God can recreate knees without having a surgery. I mean, my goodness. Imagine that. Our God is a specialist. He specializes in every form of miracle that we need. Touch your neighbor and say, God's got a miracle for you. (laughs) Now, on the Saturday night, as I walked into the meeting, I was quickened by the Holy Ghost and saw a particular scripture, Song of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 15, which says, Catch for us the little foxes. The little foxes that ruin the vineyards 
are vineyards that are in bloom. And as I was standing on the front row of the meeting, I suddenly saw a mantle come down out of heaven and landed on my right shoulder. It was an animal skin. I had never seen this type of mantle before. But as I looked at it closer, I realized that it was a fox skin. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, and he said, The little foxes that have ruined the vineyards in the past are going to be slain by my sons and daughter in this hour, and they're going to wear them as trophies, and where their harvest was stolen in the past, the Lord says that those foxes are going to be taken out, and we're going to receive the fullness of the harvest that is whew. it just, that just whew. the fullness somebody shout fullness, fullness. of your harvest yeah. is not going to be stolen in this season. And you're going to walk around with those slain foxes as trophies for others to see that you got the victory. If you believe that, shout a mighty hallelujah tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Now, we have been talking the last several weeks about Rehoboth yes. in Genesis 26. Yes. The word Rehoboth means broad places, wide open spaces, room enough. It means enlargement. Somebody say enlargement. enlargement. Say room enough. Room enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're discovering who we are. And the victory that we've been given. And that this is a season where we're coming into fuller understanding of who we are in Christ. And we're going to start walking in the victory. We've always had the victory, yes, but, we just didn't know but we are going to begin to discover it, That's right. and the enemy is going to have to leave. Hallelujah. 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 Now, the Apostle Paul said that he no longer lived, but Christ lived in him. Yes. The substance of the new Christian is a new creation, Amen. a born-again spirit, and a new quality of life. A total new expression of, a, of life and existence through the new nature given by Christ. Amen. Amen. When we were born again, the first thing that changed was our spirit man. Yes. The old man dies and we're reborn yes. to the spirit of God. Yes. The new spirit allows us to walk in total agreement with God. Yes. As we grow in the word yes. and by faith. We begin to mature, yes. and we realize that we are called to live in total victory Amen. over the devil yes. and the kingdom of darkness. Yes. Absolutely. We begin to understand that our new existence in Christ, uh, as we take proper steps to apply faith in the word of God and what has been given to us by our inheritance. This new existence that engulfs us is our new nature and our identity. Yes. The old man has died and we've been resurrected into a whole new world. Yes. 
a world of total liberation from sin, sickness, and destruction. Amen. Hallelujah. How many believe that? Hallelujah. The next thing that changes is our mind. Yes. We talked about the renewal of the mind. Yes. The Word tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Our mind is renewed by the Word of God. Yes. We understand that our soul is made up of our mind, will, and emotions. Yes. Until you renew your mind through the word, you will not be able to change your emotions. Without changing your will and emotions, you will never be able to get your flesh under control. The more we transform our nature, the closer, hallelujah, we begin to tap into our new identity in Christ. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? That we've been given a new identity. We've been given a new nature. And that new nature is (laughs) our inheritance through Christ Jesus. And as we begin to understand who we are in Christ, we begin to get the victory not only over the demonic realm, But we also begin to get victory over the soulless nature. That means you don't have to live by your emotions anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. That means I don't have to live the roller coaster of emotions every day of my life. That means I can be consistent in what I believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I see because I'm established in what I know. My goodness. And so that new identity begins to manifest upon us. And then our will and our emotions come under the subjugation of our transformed mind through the word of God. And so instead of weeping every day, crying, moaning, and complaining about what God hasn't doing for us. Wondering when God's going to, you know, cause us to walk in our destiny or the fulfillment thereof. Instead of walking around as defeated, sour, sad, bitter. Christian, you begin to walk in the victory because you, you know who you are. You have to understand that there are two roots in two trees, the roots receive, and the tree will flourish according to what waters it's receiving. And the fruit will begin to be seen by all. Now, if you're operating out of the root of bitterness, then your tree is going to function from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And your fruit will be that of what you can produce for yourself. But when you begin to live out of the root, which is Christ, your tree will begin to flourish because you're not living out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now you're operating out of the tree of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the fruit of the tree of life is resurrection power. Are you getting a hold of this tonight? As Christians, we need to understand that we have been forgiven of all trespasses. We are dead to sin, but alive to righteousness. That means that we're right standing with God. If we slip, we don't lose our salvation. On the contrary, the word tells us that we have been given an advocate. We've been given an advocate. Somebody say advocate. Advocate. Yeah, to the Father. The devil will try to bring guilt and condemnation upon us. But however, the word is clear. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The one way that you'll have victory is to walk in the Spirit. When you walk in the flesh by your will and your emotions, you will always be subjugated to the worldly standard. And some Christians are forfeiting their their heavenly inheritance because they refuse to walk in their God-given identity and take authority over words that are constantly bombarding their mind by renewing their mind to the Word of God and casting down every imagine, imagination that is contrary to the Word of God. So they remain in a place of confusion. God hasn't called us to the spirit of confusion. He's called us to live out of the spirit of Christ. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, you're full. You're full. Mm-hmm. We must now look at the light of our new nature and what it possesses. Redemption, righteousness, consecration, wisdom, authority, and the power, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Our salvation is complete. Finished. Somebody say, it's done. Finished. Finished. Completed. Completed. Our spiritual growth now rests on feasting on the scripture and allowing the renewal of our mind to take place. As you allow the word of God to work in your life, you will begin to see the nature of Christ manifested more and more. You and I as believers have been called to the same works as Christ. In fact, Christ has called us to even greater works than he performed while he was on earth. John chapter 14 verse 12. Through the indwelling we have been given the power of God to destroy the works of darkness. 1 John chapter 3 verse 18. uh, 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. We also understand and must realize that we have been given the God kind of faith. It's not something that we earn. It's something that we have already been given. According to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13, faith is our victory that overcomes the spirit of this age. Christ has fully redeemed you and made you perfect before the sight of God. According to Romans 3, verses 21 through 28 in the Amplified. And God gave us abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that we might reign as kings in life by him. Amen. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. He called you to work, walk as he walked in life according to 1 John chapter 2 verse 6 and Colossians 2 6. Speaking to the earth as sons of God manifesting his goodness in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now we're at session 5. Praise God. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. I mean, I'll tell you what. We could just close the meeting right now, go home and review that for the next six months. Come back and we'll just talk about all the victories that we've had by just applying what was just spoken. But we're just getting started here tonight. I got about two hours, so here we go. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 2. Reading in the Amplified, it says, "For, For my concern is that their hearts may be embraced, comforted and cheered and encouraged as they are knit together in love that they may come to have all the abounding wealth 
and blessings of assured conviction of understanding. And that they may become progressively and more intimately acquainted with and may know more definitely and accurately and thoroughly that mystic secret of God, which is Christ, the Anointed One. In Him, all the treasure of the divine wisdom, comprehensive insight into the ways and the purposes of God, and all the riches of spiritual knowledge and enlightenment are stored up and lie hidden. Paul the Apostle, writing to the Colossians, is speaking here of a mystery that was hidden from ages and from generations, but has now been revealed through his holy apostles and prophets to the church of Jesus Christ, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory or the sacred secret of God. Here he calls it the mystic secret. The word here is mysterion. It means something that's been hidden. The Bible says that when we pray in other tongues, we pray mysteries to God. When we pray in other tongues, we actually pray the mysteries of Christ. Although we don't understand what we are saying... We are, in fact, edifying our spirit, man, because the Bible says that every time we pray in the spirit, we are edifying ourselves. Yes. And as we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, we actually begin to pray out mysteries that are in our spirit. And we begin to pray them into the atmosphere of our life. Yes. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I don't think you got what I just said to you. The more time that you spend praying in tongues, the more time that you're praying mysteries into the atmosphere of your life. And the Bible says that if God begins to pray through us, those groanings which cannot be uttered may be mysteries or the word mysterion, but at some point the word is going to become revelation to us or apocalypto it's going to begin to be manifested to us amen and this is even where the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues come in sometimes we're thinking that tongues and interpretation which equals prophecy just means that we're going to be talking about the future but the gift the gift of prophecy is actually the revealing of the testimony of Jesus Christ and so when you have tongues and interpretation among you and the gift of prophecy is flowing, it should be primarily in the area of understanding the revelation of the new creation so that the congregation can begin to operate in the fullness of the Christ identity that God has given to them. And when you begin to understand that that is the gift and the reason that God has given the, the gift of prophecy, then you begin to really hone in on what edification, exhortation, and comfort is. Yeah. It's not, oh, brother and sister, it's going to be all right. No. No, 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 no. I see a purple shawl on you. And it means royalty. That's good. But what I'm talking about is the deep revelations of the mystery of Christ being revealed to the church. Through edification, exhortation, and comfort. Yes. And see, so you'll step over into that where you, you just start doing tongues and interpretation of tongues. And the gift of prophecy you'll see will start flowing out of the believer that is fully filled with and flooded with God. And the mystery of the cross and the resurrection and the power thereof will begin to flow out. And it will begin to hit. And we'll begin to renew men and women that hear the word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so the scripture reveals to us who Christ is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the mystic secret. Yes. And we are brought into union with him. Amen. And through the power of the cross 
and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In him all the treasure of the divine wisdom, comprehension, and insight into the ways and purposes of God are revealed. The riches of the spiritual knowledge and enlightenment are stored up, lied, and hidden. That means that the guru, the Hindu, the, the new ager can't tap into the enlightenment that God has given to you through Christ Jesus. That the mystics, the mystic uh, that, you know, gets into the, into the woods and does a satanic occultic ritual can't tap into the power that you've been given through the mystic secret of Jesus Christ. That means that there's a higher authority and power that's been given to you than any other human on the planet. You've been, disclo- you've been given the highest classified information. Moses didn't get this information. Elijah didn't get this information. The saints of old didn't get this information, but it's been delivered through the apostles and the prophets to the church of Jesus Christ so that they would walk in union with their new identity in Him and they would live in total victory, plummeting the kingdom of darkness on the planet and everywhere that they would go, that people would begin to understand that Christ is still on the throne, that He resurrected, and He's living in a body. And that body is the body of Christ. Touch your neighbor and say, you got the victory. And tonight the devil's crying. The kingdom of darkness is weeping. The devil's terrified that you're going to get a hold of this revelation and you're going to walk in it. Praise the Lord. Colossians 1.26 says, The mystery which has been hidden from ages and generation. Amplified says, From angels and men. That means that the angels, the angels were, were even confounded when this revelation was revealed. It was hidden from them. It means, it means that Michael didn't know this. Gabriel didn't understand it. The four living creatures around the throne didn't know it. They had no idea. They didn't know. They, they, they didn't understand it. Wow. <laughs> Pe- people, the angels had no clue. I mean, they had no idea. I, I, 
I want you to understand that they had no. They had no. Whew. They did not know. In fact, the Bible tells us the angels diligently look into the redemption and salvation, and they can't even comprehend what has been given. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 2 and just flip it over to verse 8. See to it that no one carries you off as spoil or makes you yourselves captives by his so-called philosophy, intellectualism, and vain deceit. Let me, let me, let me hone in on this, this vain deceit for a minute. That's idle fantasies. That means plain nonsense. Following human traditions, men's ideas, rather than... <laughs> Listen to this. man's ideas of uh, of of material rather than the spirit world. Just the crude notions following the rudimentary elements, teaching of the universe, disregarding the teachings of Christ the Messiah. In other words, anything that isn't isn't Christ is is plain. Foolishness and nonsense. And Paul says, For in him the whole fullness, the deity of the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression to the divine nature. So even now, Christ on the cross, even now, Christ. Through that cross and the resurrection came, my goodness, came to destroy the works of the enemy. And after the resurrection ascended to the right hand of the Father, in glory, in glorification, and brought us into Him so that we could be partakers of that divine nature. Well, you say, well, Brother Charlie, how do you know that we've been brought into the complete expression of the divine nature well verse 10 says and you are in him made full and having come to fullness of life in Christ you too are filled with the Godhead Father, Son and Holy Ghost and have reached full spiritual stature and he is the head of all the rule and authority and of, of every angelic principality and power You too are filled. Amen. You too have been brought to full spiritual maturity Amen. in Christ. Amen. Your spirit's full. Amen. Your spirit is full of heaven. Amen. Your spirit is full 
of the energies of Christ. And therefore, by having the fullness of the energies of Christ living on the inside of you, you have the capability to do the exploits of Christ in the earth. Now we understand that the essence of God we can never fully uh, comprehend because God is so vast that He is unknowing. But the energies of God are what we are called to participate in, partake in, and manifest in the planet. It is impossible for you as a believer that is full of God that understands who they are in Christ, to live one single day under the authority and rule of Satan in the earth. In Him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, but a spiritual circumcision performed by Christ. By stripping off the body of the flesh, the whole corrupt carnal nature and its passions and lusts. When Christ went to the cross, He died for you as you, for you, so that you could then in turn walk in the fullness of of the new creation nature, stripping off the fleshly nature and the corruption of lust and and all of its death and enter into the life of Christ and walk around a body filled with Him, flooded with Him, living in the victory of Him. Hallelujah! And you were circumcised. You were buried with Him. And your baptism in which you were also raised with him to a new life through faith uh, in the working of God as displayed when he raised him up from the dead. And you who were dead in trespasses and in uncircumcision of the flesh, your your, your sensuality, your sinful carnal nature, God brought to life together with Christ having freely given us Uh, forgiven us of all of our trespasses, having canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwritten notes, bonds, and legal uh, decrees and demands which was in force and stood against us, hostile to us, this note and regulation decrees and demands he set aside and cleared completely out of our way by nailing it to the cross. And God disarmed the principalities and powers that were arranged arranged against us and and, and (laughs) made a bold display and a public example of them, triumphing over them and it, the cross. You didn't know it was this good. You didn't know that. You didn't know. You didn't know it could be the. It could be this victorious. You didn't know that it could be this. This overwhelming the goodness of what God did for you. If it wasn't in the Bible. It would, hard, it would be hard to believe. But Paul said, this is the revelation that I was given while I was on the backside of a desert for three and a half years. And I learned by revelation who Christ was in me, the hope of glory. He revealed the revelation to me. Well, how did he do that, Paul? He did it by revealing the mystery. But how did he do it, Paul? He revealed it to me because I was filled with the Spirit. And I spoke mysteries. And by speaking mysteries while I was in, in the secret place, suddenly it was revealed to me who I was in Christ.
Colossians 2.10 says, you are complete in him. 20th century New Testament says, by your union with him, and all, you are also filled with it. So you have everything when you have Christ. You are filled with God through your union in Christ. You have everything. Everything that you need to live victoriously, triumphantly, over every work of the enemy has already been given through Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 6. So, so let me say this to you tonight. It should be very noteworthy to understand that two-thirds of the New Testament was written by Paul. And two-thirds of this New Testament is Paul getting over to the church one revelation. That if they would take a hold of it and grasp it, they would live a life of victory. The man spent the entirety of his life divulging a revelation that he received in three and a half years. And it was so powerful that all of hell attempted to come against him. And yet, even when he was imprisoned, he never lost his joy. And in fact, just kept writing of the revelation that was so unexhaustible that he knew by getting it out into the atmosphere that generations later there would be someone else that would stand and receive that same understanding of revelation that he had. And be able to implement the manifestations that Paul walked in as a believer. Oh my. I mean, strip away Paul's apostolic gift. Strap away that he was a prophet and a teacher. And recognize that the man was trying to get over a revelation to the body of Christ. So that they could walk in the supernatural power of heaven. Regardless if they were an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher... In fact, let me take it this far. The purpose of the apostle and the prophet was to reveal the mystery of Christ to the church. The revelation was, was what he was carrying. And that was the signet of his apostolic gift. Are you getting a hold of this tonight? Yes. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19. And pray also for me that freedom of utterance may be given to me that I may open the, my mouth to proclaim boldly the mystery of the good news of the gospel. Amen. He was asking the Ephesian church to pray for him that utterance may be given. The word utterance there is a logos which we could say is the written word, 
but actually it is the divine expression of Christ. In other words, he's saying, give to me the freedom of the divine expression that when I open up my mouth, the revelation will begin to flow in such a way that everyone that hears it will be able to comprehend it. That they'll begin to comprehend it. Pray, pray that the divine expression of Christ would so manifest through me that when I open up my mouth, that there is an impartation upon my words, that when I speak, it will hit the hearer and they in turn will get the same revelation that I have captured. And they'll begin to walk in victory. They'll begin to walk in the power. They'll begin to walk in the resurrection of Jesus Christ every day of their life. That they won't be controlled by their emotions. They won't be ruled by by what they see or hear. They will walk in the resurrection power. And everywhere that they go, they'll begin to put that on display for all to see. The word Christian means to be Christ-like. You and I have been called to live the life (laughs) expresses the Christ. I'm trying to get into this tonight. First Corinthians chapter one. We'll look at verse 4. I thank my God always on your behalf. For the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Well, what is, what is the grace that's been given, Paul? Verse 5. That in everything you are enriched by him. In everything you are enriched by him. William says, because you have, because you have in everything been richly blessed through union with him. In him you have received a wealth of all blessings, Malphite translation says. That in everything you may be enriched in Him, in all utterance, in all knowledge. Pray pray that I might have utterance. It may be given to me. Pray that I have the divine expression. That in everything... (laughs) You, you are enriched by Him in all of the divine utterance, in all the divine expression, and in all knowledge. In other words, he, He's saying that there is, a, there is a divine expression 
that you have been enriched with. And there is a supernatural knowledge that you have been given through Christ. And he, he couldn't stop thanking God every day. That you had been given it. You had been given it. That in everything you are enriched in Him. In everything. In every way, in everything, you are enriched in Him. And in all utterance of the divine expression and in all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Coming behind in no gift. In other words, because you have the fullness of Christ, you have been given the divine expression of the of the Christ and you have been given the fullness of the knowledge of God and in turn you have also been given the power to come behind and absolutely not one gift that is given through the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The gifts of the Spirit operate through the believer because of the divine expression that works on the inside of us. And the, and the way that we tap into deeper depths of the gifts of the Spirit is by recognizing our identity and knowing who we are in Christ. And the more that we begin to understand who we are in Him, the more that the gifts of the Spirit begin to flow out of us without effort. Amen. Because now we're not trying to tap into something. We're flowing out of an unlimited source. In all knowledge, in all utterance, in all divine expression of God, that he, he's saying, pray for me in, 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 in Ephesians. He's saying, pray for me that every time that I open up my mouth, I'm going to have freedom to proclaim boldly this message. He said, he said don't even, I don't even want to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. All I want is just to have an utterance of revelation on this particular, this particular subject because if I get it over to the, them, then in fact what will happen is they will come behind in no spiritual gift. And they'll begin to flow. And see, the body will just minister to the body naturally. A healthy body will just drive out sickness and disease out of it Amen. naturally. Amen. Where you find a, a, a healthy believer, you'll find a divine expression of the Godhead. Amen. So then it just flows. Touch your neighbor, say it just flows. Colossians, Colossians 4. Colossians 4. Colossians 4 in verse 3. And at the same time, pray for us also that God may open the door for us, for the word, the gospel, to, to, to proclaim the mystery concerning Christ, the Messiah, on account to which I am, a, I am in prison. That I'm a proclaim 
it fully and make clear, speak boldly and unfold the mystery as it is my duty. Paul said it's my duty to proclaim this. It's, it's, it's my call to proclaim fully, to make clear the mystery. It, it's, 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 it's my call to boldly speak and unravel the divine mystery of heaven, which is Christ. In other words, I'm going to spend my entire life unraveling the revelation of the new nature of Christ Jesus. I'm going to spend my whole life unraveling this mystery because it's my duty. That's what I'm going to I'm going to spend my entire life on unraveling the mystery of Christ. Because when I unravel the mystery of who Christ is in me, the hope of glory, then I will come behind in no spiritual gift. Paul was a master because he had the revelation of who Christ was. He master he was he was he was the master of the gifts because he understood who was living on the inside of him. When you understand who's living on the inside of you, then you don't, you don't try to ask him to come down because you know he's already in. You don't go searching for a word because you already have one. Praise the Lord. Turn with me to Ephesians uh, 3. Verse 16, let the word spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your heart and mind and dwell in all richness as you teach and admonish and train one another in the all insight and intelligence and wisdom in spiritual things. Goodness. And as you sing... Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs making melody to God with His grace in your heart. I want, I, I got to read that again to you. Because, because I, I'm, I'm smashing an idol right now. I'm literally destroying something. And you that are watching online, rewind this. Go back and listen to it about 15 times because you need this. 16, let the word spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your heart and minds and dwell in, in all its richness as you teach, admonish, and train one another in all insights and intelligence and wisdom. In spiritual things as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs making melody in your heart unto God. What, 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 what? I'm going to read it to you in your King James. And I'm going to show you something. We're talking about divine utterance tonight. We're talking about the depth of the well. That when it, it's flowing out of you is a well that will always have a word. Yeah. 
I meant Colossians. 3.16. Let the word spoken to Christ in the richest measure have its home in your heart and dwell in you. The richest of the mind dwell in you and the rich uh, that you, as you teach and admonish and train one another in all insight and intelligence and wisdom in spiritual things and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs making melody in your grace in his heart. Now watch this. Colossians 3, 16. King James. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God our Father. Now, hold your place there. In Colossians, and flip over, f- flip over to the book of Ephesians. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory. (sighs) Ephesians five. Verse eighteen. And be not drunk with wine, whereas it is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in hymns, psalms, and spiritual songs, making, uh, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always with all things unto the God and the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Amen. Now, this, these, two, these two passages parallel... In a simple principle that I want to give you tonight. When you are filled with the Spirit, you will have the divine utterance of heaven flowing out of you. When the divine utterance of heaven is flowing out of you, the, the supernatural expression of Christ will begin to permeate out of your innermost being. And it will begin to manifest through prophecy. The prophetic utterance will flow out of you. And the way that it will flow out of you is that you will begin to speak in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. The expression of the supernatural utterance will no longer flow out of your human intellect. It will flow out of your well that is in your spirit man. It will bypass your will and your emotions and it will begin to divinely flow out of your innermost being. This is what a real Nabi prophet does. That is real divine expression of the, of the gift of prophecy and the divine utterance of heaven. Amen. And when it is in, a, in its fullest expression, it will come as psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Amen. And it will flow out of you by God's grace. This is really powerful because this means 
that when we gather together in his name, then we begin to give thanks and the power of thanksgiving produces Produce, my God. It begins to produce the overwhelming understanding of your victory in Christ. And this is why, this is why. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, which some have, but submit to one another in the holy fear of God. So what happens is that when the divine expression is being manifested through a body, you don't have to look for a word in the parking lot. You don't even have to learn, my God. You don't even have to, you don't, you don't even have to learn the 15 ways to prophesy. Because you're operating out of flourishing well. And you'll say things that you don't even understand what you're saying. But because the word of God is alive in the inside of you. And you've been constantly filling yourself up with that word and that revelation. The power of that revelation is flowing out of you to edification, exhortation, and comfort. And it's coming out without effort. It bubbles out of you. Yes. Touch your neighbor, say bubble, bubble. bubble, bubble. The devil's in trouble. Bubble, bubble. The devil's in trouble. Say bubble, bubble. bubble, bubble. The devil's in trouble. Can I take you one more place tonight? Are you too full? You might, I might, I'm overwhelming you tonight. Romans, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. But God's free gift. Romans chapter 5. Let's look. Let's look at verse 17. For if because one man's trespasses lapse and offense death reign through one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and free gift of righteousness, putting him, putting them into right standing with him, reign as kings in life through the one man. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Well then, as one man's trespasses, one man's false step in falling away led to the condemnation of all men, so one man's act of righteousness leads to the acquittal, the right standing with God in life for all men. For just as one man's disobedience, failing to hear, heedlessness and carelessness, the many were 
constituted sinners. So by one man's obedience, the many will be con- <laughs> constituted righteous, made accepted to God, brought into right standing with him. But then the law came in only to expand and increase the trespass, making it more apparent and, and the exciting opposition. But when sin increased and abounded, grace God, the grace of God's uh, uh, abounded even more, surpassing it and, and increased and more superabounded. So that just as sin has reigned in, in death, so grace, his unmerited, undeserved favor, might reign also through righteousness, through uh, right standing with God, which issues the eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. You and I have been called to live as kings. Amen. Because one man and his fall caused all of eternity uh, all of 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 whew, humanity to fall through one man's obedience we were brought back and we now can walk around as kings decreeing and declaring the works of God and as a result of that the song that is in our heart is not sorrow, sadness. It is a song of joy and victory. And wherever we go, we can lay down the scepter of heaven and set men and women free. Lift your hands tonight. Father, we give you glory, we give you praise. We thank you for all that you're doing among us. We thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you for the divine utterance expression, the kingly decree that you've given to all that are in you, that we no longer have to walk as sinners, but we can walk as the righteous of God in Christ Jesus, living victorious and conquering everything that's standing in our way. Father, I thank you that this is our portion, your presence. This is our inheritance, your power. This is our body, the Christ. Give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Almighty God, we thank you for the divine expression, the supernatural utterance of heaven, the manifestation of the Christ living and moving and having his being in us that wherever we go, we crush the power of Satan in his kingdom. Through manifestation of miracles and signs and wonders, we're called to victory. We're called to the miraculous. We're called to the divine utterance of the mystery of God. Somebody's going to get a hold of this tonight and shake a nation. Somebody's going to get a hold of this and start a business. Somebody's going to get a hold of this and their mind is going to come into alignment. They're going to get off their prescriptions. They're going to get off antidepressants. They're going to move into the victory of heaven. They're going to stand in the resurrection. They're going to live in the victory of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. My, my, my. You can't go back after you. You understand who you are. How can you how can you go back? How can you listen to a word of vain deceit, philosophies, rudiments of man's religion? When it's so evident what God has paid for. The divine expression. Making himself fully alive in you as a new creation. A believer fully flooded with God himself. Allowing the complete expression of the of the Christ to manifest through your life wherever you go. In all wisdom, I I just... I just, I just... I I just, my. I, I mean.
so that in him in every respect you are enriched in full power and readiness of speech to speak your faith in complete knowledge and illumination to give the full insight into its meaning. The, 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 the moment that Christ stepped into your life was the moment that your old man died. And he gave unto you the full enrichment of his power to speak your faith. To bring manifestation to everyone that you come into contact with. So that they would know that what you're carrying is not a philosophy. Rooted in religion and tradition. But is a revelation of a living Christ. That is alive and indwelling on the inside of you. I decree and declare that everywhere that you go you'll have divine utterance. That everywhere that your footsteps you'll have divine favor. That everything that you put your hand to do will prosper in this season. That every door that has been shut to you in the past by the enemy will be unlocked by the keys that you've been given through Christ Jesus. And you will go around displaying the fullness of the victory that he paid for on the cross. That you will never fall behind or lack in any spiritual empowerment. That the grace which God has given to you will operate and you will see the fullness of the manifestation of His power in your life. For Colossians 1.18 says, For the story, the message of the cross is sheer absurdity and folly to those that perish and on their ways to perdition. But to us who are being saved, it is the manifestation of the power of God. Father, I thank you that tonight there is a revelation that is being released to your body and those that are watching and are part of the Legacy Academy that the manifestation of God's power will be evident in every believer They're going to see God in you. They're going to see Christ in you, the hope of glory. They're going to see it. They're going to see it at your job. They'll see it at your business. They'll see it at at the grocery store. They'll see it online. They'll see it whenever you open up your mouth. They'll see it. When you lay your hands, they'll see it. When you walk, they'll see it, they'll they'll see it, 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 they'll see it. In Jesus' mighty name. If you believe that, shout a mighty hallelujah tonight. We're going to give you a chance to give tonight if you'd like to give. Watch it online. You, You can sow into Destiny Encounters if you'd like. Go to the website, destinyencounters.com. So... Underneath the donation tab, praise God. If you want to give tonight, you can give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is so good. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you're watching online, we love you. And uh, we'll see you this Thursday. God bless you.